Hello, this is Chef Sandra Mallet with Ingredient Addiction. And today, well, I'm frankly addicted to rosemary, and that's fresh rosemary. In fact, I went out to the yard and picked some just for our recipes that we're gonna be working on today, which is our orange marmalade rosemary roast chicken with some really great potatoes and baby carrots. And then I have my orange zest rosemary shortbread cookies. I know that sounds a little weird, but it's really good. And then we're doing a really great compound butter that you can actually use for both of them. So get ready, sit back, and be hungry. It's ingredient addiction. Ingredient Addiction is grateful to our sponsors. Amoretti Ingredients, the ultimate pastry, savory, and beverage ingredient manufacturing company. FOH, front of the house. My plating partner that makes my dishes look beautiful. And ChefWorks, their coats always make me look great and comfortable. I'm gonna get started on the orange marmalade rosemary roast chicken. I've got all my ingredients mise en place out. This isn't a really hard recipe, and you can even add a little bit more stuff if you've got some other favorites, or a little bit less. I try to believe less is more and keep it simple. I've got some red onion, I've got mushroom, and I've got some rosemary, which we actually picked in our garden. I've got red potatoes, and I've got the yellow potato. It gives a little bit of different flavor uh, profiles for you. I've got some chopped up rosemary, of course my brown sugar, Orange marmalade, which is a really big part of this recipe, helps keep the chicken really moist and really tasty, and it gives such a lovely citrus, uh, citrus balance to it. I'm gonna put fresh oranges on it as well, and then I've got my pink Himalayan salt and baby carrots, and again, I like to double this up, so I'm using some rosemary uh, olive oil. Not all olive oils are flavored, but you can always go into your local uh, markets or specialty shops and get rosemary or lemon or basil. There's a lot of different olive oils that you can get to help add flavor to your recipe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with the chicken. And I've basically just got a whole chicken here. I've already taken all the insides out. And you know, if you have a kid that's not going to bed uh, on time, have them clean the chicken out when you're cooking. They'll take a look at those gizzards and they'll go to bed really early all the time and listen to you. What I am working with is I get samples from a lot of different companies. When I see something in a magazine that looks good, I want to work with it. This happens to be something called Honey Cream. It's blood orange and it's from a great place called Honey Ridge Farms. I am literally just going to rub this on my chicken and just get it right in there. We've already padded off the chicken with some uh, paper towels to help get some of that moisture away. The reason you're doing that is so that you can get a nice crispy skin, which is what we're looking for. This is a really thick product, so we're just gonna rub a little bit of it on there. And it smells amazing. That's the wonderful thing about working with some of these citrus products is your kitchen's gonna smell amazing even before you get cooking started. Now that I've got the, the base rubbed onto the chicken, I am going to start adding some of my ingredients. And it's really simple. We've already cut a lot of this up. I am just putting on a whole bunch of onions and the green onions and just spreading it all over. Then I've also got my orange marmalade. So I'm going to just, just pour it on. I'm telling you, you want a lot of it on there. You want to get it all over this chicken. And again, you can find some orange marmalade at your market. You can go to some of the other larger stores where you can get it in bulk. Um, I don't have any particular brand, whatever you enjoy. I've got some of my salt. You wanna salt your chicken heavily because a lot of people don't realize the reason everybody says everything tastes like chicken is because they don't season it enough. So it just tastes bland. We don't, oops, we don't make bland chicken here. That was a little spill, but Julia, Julia Child cut herself on her first TV show, so I think I can spill on mine. So I'm putting a little bit of dried rosemary on here, which is great, because again, we want to layer the orange, we want to layer the rosemary, and then we want to hit it with the brown sugar. 
I've got some olive oil, which I talked about, the rosemary olive oil, so I'm pouring a little bit of that on there. You do want to have a lot going because we're going to put our potatoes and our carrots in here. I am now going to put a bunch of brown sugar on there. And it's just loose and we're just putting it on the top to give a little bit of a caramelization. And again, you can put as much or as little as you like. Since it's my dinner party, I get to do what I want. So we've got the brown sugar going on here. And again, like I said, I overdid it a bit. And I always want to put a little bit of pepper. And I like these new grinders out. There's, they're in all different uh, of your favorite spice, uh, spice aisles. You can just do your own fresh ground pepper, which is great. That always gives it a little bit more of a punch. I also like to put some of the loose leaves of thyme and rosemary around. So everything gets aromatic and wonderful. And lastly, let's see, I'm gonna put a bit of these carrots in here. What's nice about the baby carrots is you really don't have to cut them and they're very easy, very easy to eat and, and cut up and work within your, work within your, uh, your plan for your recipe. You don't have to, like I said, chop them up a lot. So we've already pre-chopped up a bunch of our potatoes. And I'm just going to add them. And a lot of times what you can do is you can boil them off first, get them a little softer before you're going to put them in the oven. I tend to cut them up into smaller pieces so that they just roast off easy because I roast my chickens at kind of like slow, slow and long instead of really high. So we're going to have quite a bit of yummy flavor the longer it gets to sit in all these really great juices. So we've got all of our potatoes and our carrots within our chicken. And I'm going to lastly cut up an orange because I do like to add fresh orange to the top of my chickens. It always looks really nice. And when you bring it out to the table, everybody goes, ooh, because ah, you've got oranges on it. It looks really pretty. And then I squeeze some extra orange juice around. And you can just throw your orange just throw your orange back in there. And I'll just keep adding flavor, continually adding flavor. And so I'm gonna add just a touch more olive oil, probably using the rest of this bottle just because it's a smaller size, but we want everything to be, we want everything to be moist and not dry. And that's what definitely can happen if you overcook or you don't put enough fats and liquids in there. I do also like to put a little bit of butter so I'm gonna put a bit of butter right on the top and on some of the legs. I think butter makes everything better. And this chicken is gonna be a lot happier with butter on it. Well, it's a little heavy, so hang on. I'm gonna open the oven first. This is gonna cook for about about an hour, hour and a half. You're gonna to want to go kind of low and slow. I check it about every half hour. I also turn it. And if for any reason the top of your chicken, uh, the skin is cooking too fast, you can always tint it with some foil. That's another tip that a lot of people don't think about. Keep it going and just put some foil over it while it's in the oven and it's not gonna keep burning. And another tip when I was talking about putting butter on, I love to put butter in everything and finish your chicken with butter. So what I also like to do is keep my butter out while I'm cooking. When I start, I just take it out of the cooler and let it get to room temperature. And that allows you to do anything you want with it. You don't ever have to use a microwave or do some extra steps. So that's a good tip to get working on. And now that we've got this in the oven, we're gonna let it cook and then we're gonna eat. It's been about an hour and a half. And about, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to eat. It smells absolutely amazing in here. So we're gonna take this bird out of the oven. And you really wanna be careful here because this is really hot. And not always do your oven mitts take care of not burning your hands. So be real careful. And as you can see, oh, amazing. The orange slices have just completely melted into the chicken. The smell is amazing, the rosemary. I can't get enough of it. We need to cut this thing up now and start eating. Mm -hmm. 
I just do something simple. We're not carving for Thanksgiving, and I am certainly not the person to carve for Thanksgiving because I am missing an important finger to carve. So do not count on my carving skills, but I'm gonna take, I like the breast. I would generally say I'm a breast man, but I'm not a man, right? So I am going to just have a really great piece of the chicken breast. I like to get some of the skin. I'm not a huge skin person, but when it's cooked right, it's yummy. So I've got a little bit of carrot. I always enjoy the carrots. And I did not get myself a regular knife to try this with, but we're just gonna go, we're gonna go Rambo and I'm gonna cut it with this. You can really, really smell the rosemary and the orange. Oh, it's awesome. Really, really great. I shouldn't be talking with my mouth full. My grandmother is rolling over in her grave. Now it's time for dessert. Orange zest rosemary shortbreads. Hope you're ready for them. Well, now that we've had dinner with our exciting roasted chicken, I am off to make us our dessert. And that's our orange zest shortbread cookies. Very easy to make. You're gonna take your softened, unsalted butter. And the reason you want it softened is we've gotta put it in the mixer. You don't wanna to have to run, run to the microwave or do anything while you're trying to get everything ready. Again, mise en place, mise en place, mise en place. Remember what that means? Everything in its place. So we've got your uh, uh, softened butter and then we're adding our sugar. And you're gonna do something that's called creaming. And what you're doing is you're combining the sugar and the butter together and it makes a really nice cream. So it's been about five minutes. That's about all you need to cream the sugar and the butter. And we're gonna start adding the rest of our ingredients. But before we do, I'm sure you've noticed that I'm using an ancient KitchenAid. I got it for my wedding. It's 30 years old, I love it. And it still works amazing. So I wanted to give a shout out because I love my product. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna put one egg and it's just a whole egg and you're gonna add it in. It's gonna mix right in there. And you wanna get this incorporated. So you don't need the mixer on super high, but I'm just gonna put it up just another little notch just to get that going. Maybe another notch. So now that we've got that mixing, I'm gonna start adding some of my extracts. I've got a um, an orange zest oil and a lemon zest oil and um, my vanilla from Amaretti, which is amazing. So I'm just adding it in, because we're adding our flavorings right in here, very easy. You can also zest your orange, your oranges directly. And I've got fresh rosemary that we got from our garden again. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit to it. And you can't do this without making a mess. So you're gonna make a bit of a mess. So we've got this creaming. Add it a little bit more speed just to get that going. Then we're gonna drop it down really low. Now I'm gonna add in the flour, and I like to turn the blender off when I'm adding the flour, because otherwise it can go everywhere. But I do have a good tip for you. Get a dampened kitchen towel, and you can put it over the front of your mixer and the sides, and that'll help keep your powdered sugar or your flour, or whatever it is, getting all over your kitchen. So that's a little tip. So I'm gonna add my flour. And then I'm gonna turn this on very slowly to let it incorporate. And it's gonna to start to incorporate. You do wanna mix this pretty thoroughly because you don't want chunks of flour throughout the cookies because all the cookies really are is your flavorings, um, that one egg, sugar, and flour and butter. So you uh, definitely wanna get this mixed. It's gonna be a very soft dough, so don't get scared of it because you're gonna to have to roll it into a log and make a shape with it. And this is, this is all you need to do to make the batter. Now the batter's done, so I'm just gonna take, take it out of the bowl and take it out of the blender. There we go. Again, old school, it twists out. Very fun. So what's nice about this dough, I'm just gonna make a little bit of room here. It's really, really soft. So if you wanna take a look at that, it's really, really soft. And what you're gonna have to do is put it into a log and I happen to have one available and show you. Okay. So what I have is, this is an example 
of what you're going to make. You're going to take the dough, which I have here, as again you saw, is very, very loose. You can't cook with that. So you're gonna take it and make it into a log. And what I do is I have a really good way of doing it. I just use some plastic wrap. Let's move the mixer out of the way. And yes, it weighs about a thousand pounds. You could exercise with it. So you're gonna take your dough and just make yourself a simple log. And in this case, we'll show you, you're just gonna take some of your dough out. This will just be an example. And you're just gonna use your plastic wrap to help you make your log. Just like that, and you just twist off the ends, and so you have your log. And what's nice is you put them in the fridge or the freezer, and you can just keep cutting up cookies all day long. And let me show you how you're gonna do that. I'm gonna grab my trusty chef knife. You wanna make sure you've got a big enough knife to get the proper leverage, because a little bitty knife ain't gonna cut it. Size does matter here, ladies. Okay, so you're just gonna simply just cut through this very easily. As you can see, it's not quite as easy as I thought, but because they're still cold, you just have about a quarter of an inch of a thickness. You're not looking for a giant cookie unless you have wanted to make a really large log and you're making large cookies if you want to do like a, a square or a biscuit shape. So this is really simple. And what you're going to do next is we've got our sheet pan. And I really do love to use these plastic, uh, they're called sil silpats, they're not plastic, they're, they're a silicon sheet and they're just amazing to use and your cookies and things don't burn. So I just put them right on the silpat. You don't need any butter or anything. So you're just gonna add it, I'm just gonna add a few more of these. And they don't spread, which is really nice too. So you really can stick to, you really can stick to uh, keeping it a very simple, very simple uh, with not extra spraying and all kinds of stuff. And lastly, you're going to put some sugar on, on these. I have a little bit of sugar because with the rosemary, it is kind of a savory cookie and the sugar really does make a difference. And it even caramelizes a little. And we ate quite a few of them before we started. So you're just going to add a little bit of sugar. And it's also a little bit to taste. If you want a little bit more sugar, go for it. I say the more the merrier. This is all you have to do. And they're done, and we just pop them in the oven. And they come out about eight to 10 minutes later, looking amazingly like this. And we've got a little bit of the caramelized sugar on them. You've got the rosemary. In fact, you can even see the bits of sugar on them. They're crunchy, they're crispy, they're yummy, and they smell amazing. And as you can see, really simple recipe, and especially with making the logs, you can make them anytime you want. And in fact, they smell so good, I'm gonna have one now. Thank you. Weren't those cookies good? They really are. I'm now going to do a little bitty thing for you because um, we have a little extra time. I've made some compound butter and what I like about making your own compound butter is you can take unsalted butter and make it into anything you want and really, really have some fun with your dinner parties or like if you want to have a lovely croissant for breakfast in the morning. It's just a little different than just having regular butter. So what I've done for the theme of rosemary is we are making a orange zest rosemary compound butter. Now again, you wanna have your butter at room temperature, which is exactly what I did. I've just left it out, really simple. I can just scrape it right off the packaging. As you can see, it just goes right in. I'm gonna add a touch of rosemary, which we've already chopped up. You wanna make sure you're generous with it because the whole point is, is you want to taste the rosemary and butter is pretty much all fat. So it really does take a little bit of flavoring to get through it. So just a touch more rosemary. And then what I do too is I squeeze a little bit of orange juice in there just to give it a little bit more of a punch. And then I just use a zester. And you can just find them, you know, at any of the local cooking shops, really easy. There's a, a whole lot of fun ones, big ones, small ones. You don't need anything fancy, just a little zest and a little bit of the juice. And all I'm doing is mixing it up. Very simple and you just give it a good mix. 
Oh my gosh, it smells really amazing. That's another really fun part about this, is your kitchen will continue to smell wonderful. This looks ready to go, and again, it was just the orange, uh, orange zest and the rosemary and the butter. And I've created uh, an example to show you. This is really fun for dinner parties. Just get a nice little bowl, put your own special compound butter in it, and don't forget to name it. Tell your guests it's your creation. It's really just that simple to make this compound butter. And with that, I just want to thank you all for joining me. I hope I've persuaded you to become addicted to rosemary just like I am. Maybe not like I am, because I think it, it's a little much. We have a relationship, me and rosemary. So I really want to thank you. This is Chef Sandra Mallet, Ingredient Addiction.